if you do share one of your anchors with us, we can perhaps help change that for you. We can mm. help remedy a negative anchor, something that reminds you or reminds your physiology, because all this is practical, Claire, isn't it? Your, your mm. physiology reacts to an unresourceful anchor. And for reasons why you might not understand consciously, suddenly you're in a bad mood. Suddenly yeah. you've got no energy. And you might not even know what that anchor is. Oh, hello, Vicky. We've got, oh, we've hi, got, Vicky. We've got Ray Vicky here. Hello, yeah. Vicky. Nice All see. the way from Manila, Vicky. It's lovely Ooh. to be here. Come on then, Vicky. Have you got a good anchor or a bad anchor you want to share with us? Be brave. Let us know. Come on. So Vicky, actually, Jenny, Vicky was um, was going to host us. Do you remember you when you were supposed to be coming last year to do that workshop? And we never did. And uh, so Vicky used to work in Jersey and she's moved back to the oh. Philippines. You know, so it's lovely to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I wonder if um, there's something that perks you up, Vicky. There's something that um, puts you into a good state looking forward to something oh yes lovely to see you but apparently <laughs> we're the good anchor we're the good anchor yeah. <laughs> it's lovely it's lovely for vicky to see us that's wonderful <laughs> i like being a positive anchor <laughs> you know there's something jenny and I, i'd like perhaps we could actually do that now i think it would be quite cool to actually do a, an anchor or disanchoring or an anchoring re-anchoring i'm not sure how to say it collapsing right. anchors if, if it's know, a negative one we'll collapse it into a good one how about that right so you know you were talking about your cup of tea oh yes i have something when it comes to three o'clock i will mm -hmm. stick into the kitchen i will open the cupboard and I, not only I'll make a cup of tea, but I will also start nibbling at the biscuits. Ooh. And then it's one, and then it's two, and then it's three. And then sometimes I finish the packet just in case the children sees that the packet has been open. So I just wrap it and put it in a bin quickly and put it underneath all the bit of the bit. So no one see that I had a full packet of biscuits. And this is becoming very, very, very regular. <laughs> Can I ask what type of biscuit? <laughs> well, at this moment in time, they're Oreos. <laughs> well, you know, I, I've got this thing. People initially when they knew what I could do, when they've been to YouTube. And I had a, had a lady last week, actually, say that um, they weren't going to talk to me in case I stopped them eating chocolate, and they loved chocolate. And so I, I offered to uh, to phone them up because they're asking me some questions. And, oh, no, could you might stop me eating chocolate? <laughs> People come up to me with their cigarettes and they say, you're not going to take these away from me. I've got this thing that actually I'm here to make life better for you, not worse. <laughs> if you think these biscuits have the power to change your state and make you enjoy life more, eat them for goodness sake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not eating them would make you feel deprived, depressed, um, worried about life, etc. Then then you know that's that's one thing. But if as is more and more the case, somebody eats those biscuits and then looks back on the situation and wishes they hadn't, looks back on the situation yeah. and feels powerless, feels controlled by their environment then that's a different thing altogether so my question to you to get a little bit more serious now is there an element of your environment that you've just described Claire that has control over you that you call biscuits well I, I think I, I think I'm greedy <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I've got a problem. I think I'm greedy. But then I feel really sick because I've ate too many. I feel like 
you know, this is not going to help my weight. This is just really bad. So once I've eaten it, I feel really guilty afterwards and I don't want to do it, but I keep doing it. So this is your unconscious mind at work. Your unconscious mind is constantly looking out. It's like you've got a big antenna on top of your head going, what could make me feel better? What could make me feel better? Particularly when we're kind of a, a little bit stressed. The um, prime directive of your unconscious mind, your higher mind, if you like, is one, to keep you safe, and two, to bring you pleasure. And people look for pleasure in all sorts of places. And if it does bring you pleasure, brilliant, wonderful, keep doing it. And if it brings you pain, if you consciously think, oh, I shouldn't have done that and now I feel sick, blah, 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 mm -hmm. Oops, excuse me. If, if it's bringing you pain, then it's time to address that because your unconscious has done it your unconscious has reached for the biscuits. Mm -hmm. In other words, you've done it without thinking, really. You haven't given it some conscious thought. You've just gone to the cupboard, I take it, and opened the cupboard, and the biscuits are in your mouth before you know it. Just mm -hmm. like the cigarette is lit, and the person hasn't really given much conscious thought to having the cigarette. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, if you're Unconscious has done it. It's like pulling your hand away from something and then thinking consciously, why did you do that? You act unconsciously and then we try and decipher why we did certain things. So my question to you now is, for what reason, because we never say why, do we, Claire, we don't say why, for what reason do you think consciously now, now that you're giving it attention, because I often think we don't think enough. So now that you've got that conscious attention towards this thing in your environment, this cupboard with all these biscuits, and now that you're thinking consciously, for what reason do you think you would have gone to the cupboard at exactly three o'clock and ate all those Oreos? What do you think is the reason behind that? Why would your unconscious do that to you? I don't know. Maybe it's just a just a break and a bit of sugar intake. It just you know perks me out up. You know maybe I just eat it and then I can go back to work. So it I don't know. It's it's it feels a little bit like you know yeah. And maybe it's just that sugar sugar rush that you get from from the Oreos. But then well, you that, get that's exactly it. You, you're you're now supposing you're mm -hmm. playing with the concept of um, logic. Um, so before we even talk about logical levels, as we will do during this week, we're, we're really talking about anchors at this moment in time, that the um, the idea, the concept of having a biscuit, well, it must be, um, well, biscuits are sugary, so that mm. gives me energy, so maybe I wanted the energy, or I would have had a break, so maybe it's a way of me having a break from the computer or whatever I'm focused upon. Yes, maybe it's a break and it's sugar, so it's energy. And uh, and so we, we think about logically um, why we think, for what reasons we think we do what we do. And do you think that's true? That's the next question. Mm. In other words, were you actually changed positively by having the biscuits? Well, I, then after I feel really guilty. So I, I, in a way, I don't want to be eating the biscuits because I feel bad afterwards. I mean, you know, so I'd rather not. I'd rather not eat it. Well, we we're, we're now dealing with timelines, which is another NLP concept. At that moment in time, I'm going to go take you back to the moment in time. Well, actually, it's. Uh, 27 minutes past three in Jenny land, in Hypno Woman land. So at three o'clock, did you have biscuits? Well, I had a cup of tea, <laughs> but I missed on the biscuit because we were going live. <laughs> oh, that's very interesting because you, you, your unconscious doesn't keep track of time. And whilst this kind of is an unconscious act, it needed the um, signal from your 
conscious mind to know what time it was as to whether or not it was biscuit time, Oreo time. <laughs> but if you don't know what the time is or if you are distracted, yes. then you're not going to have the biscuit. No. And so what's happened here, and I'm very glad that you brought this. You wanted the biscuit. You had the desire for the biscuit for reasons which you can now explain to yourself because you're putting logic in the future. If you like, you're looking back as to why you did something. It's not happening now. Mm. It didn't happen at three o'clock today. So I know it sounds a very simple idea, but everything in life can be hung on the framework of NLP, if you like, which will help us with the larger concepts. So it may just seem to be a biscuit and an anchor, and we pass it off. Yes, biscuits make us feel good, don't they? Until they make us fat, or make our system sluggish, or make us feel sick. Or actually so, wake you up, because Jenny said she's just, she ate big biscuits in the middle of the, the night. So that's even worse. Vicky says she eats biscuits in the middle of the night, a nightly habit. Oh, does, I don't <laughs> think right to, it's not a sleepwalking thing then. <laughs> are you sleepwalking, Vicky, or are you in purpose going to the biscuit cupboard? <laughs> well, we'll keep an is, eye on you. Yeah, this is very interesting about actually waking in the middle of the night because. Um, when people wake, and I'll come back to your biscuits in a moment, Claire, you're not off the hook yet. That's fine. Um, <laughs> waking in the middle of the night or waking at any time when one thinks one ought to be asleep, usually the first thing that happens is we look at the clock. Yeah. Because it's dark, we've been asleep, now we're awake, what on earth's going on? Mm -hmm. so we look at the clock to see, should I still be asleep? And then we address, do I need the toilet? If I go to the toilet, that's really going to wake me up. Do you think I ought to go to the toilet? Yeah, I really <laughs> need the toilet now. So we kind of then go to the toilet, usually, not always, but usually. Um, and then we're, we're addressing our body, you see, by going to the toilet, or by um, whatever we do. Maybe we, we're a bit thirsty nom, 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 as we are when we're asleep. And with that num 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 comes mm, ooh, biscuit maybe. Mm. <laughs> Vicky. <laughs> what we've got to realise, folks, is that the biscuits in one sense or another are fulfilling something within us. Mm, and okay. we go kind of beyond the fulfillment into excess. It's a little bit like we've got an unconscious program. If this has made us feel better which I don't know anybody on the planet who having one biscuit wouldn't feel better. There's some lovely biscuits out there. <laughs> if it makes us feel better, would another one make us feel even better than that one? And so what we're really dealing with here is excess. We think it's just a biscuit. But if our conscious mind says, and the most damaging thing we can say to ourselves is shouldn't, I shouldn't have had the biscuit and I shouldn't have another one. As soon as you say that to yourself, all you can think about is biscuits. Mm. Like the person having a cigarette, I shouldn't have had that cigarette and mm. I shouldn't have another one. Cigarette, cigarette, biscuits, biscuits. I've got to admit that we're reaching out, folks, to things in our environment to make us feel better. Mm -hmm. And in that red hot moment of eating the biscuit, you're not thinking about how it might make you feel sick. You're not thinking about um, any um, future excess energy we might be carrying that we put to an identity level and call it fat. 
we call our stored energy that, that the body's putting to one side in case we need that energy later, we call that fat, don't we? And the worst thing then we can do is call ourselves fat. Mm -hmm. See, when we put something at an identity level, it really does upset us then that mm -hmm. I am fat. No, nobody is fat. Nobody on the planet is fat. Do you know that? You, you, your hair, your blood, your bone, your skin, you're all sorts of stuff. And the fact that you carry is just excess energy stored in the body. Mm. Yeah. But what you're, I think, saying, Claire, is that I shouldn't have eaten those biscuits. I don't want to eat them tomorrow at three o'clock. And Vicky's saying, I don't want to eat them in the middle of the night because, you see, we need to finish this sentence. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with eating a few biscuits, Claire and Vicky? Well, I, for me, I don't know about you, Vicky, but for me, I know that it's I just eat too many of them. So if I can then just, I guess if I can stop myself, then I just have one. But I've got no control power. <laughs> well, I'd say that you do because you're not eating biscuits now. You're not constantly <laughs> eating, are you? But at some point, you stop. <laughs> So there is that control, and this is the gift I want to give people, that there's a threshold within every human being where you, you cannot miscreate, where you know, oh, I wish I hadn't done that, so I don't want to do that again, and I need to have a word with myself. And rather than saying I never want another biscuit to pass these lips ever again, which is what we call a diet, which, folks, doesn't work, what we want to do really is make our experience of a biscuit so pleasurable, mm. so satisfying, really engaging with all of the papillae, the little taste buds on the sides of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, the back of the tongue, the roof of the mouth, the back of the throat, feeling it going down, thinking, mm, snuggling down into that, really enjoying that biscuit, eating it slower, savoring life people eating is one of the joys of being alive mm. i promise you that the more you consciously enjoy that biscuit and accept that you want a biscuit for goodness sake the less biscuits you will eat mm. because you will be enjoying you'll be getting out of that biscuit what you need quite often we're eating while we're doing something else and we're not really understanding how we're being satisfied and pleasured by that experience. And so, therefore, it hardly hits the, the sides, does it? It just kind of goes in and tries to fill a gap. Mm, yeah. Does that sound that's, what, that's what Artie was saying. I, I generally, your kids are up and they're probably eating the biscuits with you, so you're kind of keeping them company. <laughs> and actually... <laughs> <laughs> Arty, you're very good. Arty's in Mumbai, actually, so it's lovely to be here, Marty, and to, to be joining us this afternoon. I stopped eating biscuits. I am now on keto cheese crackers. <laughs> Excellent. I, I think that's a really good point, Arty, because what Arty's done in NLP terms is taken the submodalities of something. So let's say he, he's recognised the reasoning behind a certain activity um, that there's a lot of communion I mean um, there's it, it, it's a sense of community eating together mm. <laughs> some of my eating disorder clients uh, I've always said to you Claire haven't I don't be don't be fooled by the slim people <laughs> they're, the ones, they're the ones eating the chocolate bars in the toilet cubicle at work because they don't want <laughs> anybody else to know they're eating them <laughs> and at the extreme, you know, that they're, they're making themselves sick afterwards because they feel so guilty and bad about eating something. You know, the, there's a serious side to all this. But the fact is a chocolate bar or a packet of biscuits, etc., is an anchor to a good time. And so um, by knowing that as artists perhaps discovered, it's the eating, it's the community with the people that we're in, we want to do what they're doing. And this is how a lot of smokers start, by the way. Mm. The kids at the back of the bike sheds, you know, in the old days, 
Um, somebody's doing something <laughs> and they seem to be enjoying it and I want to join in. I don't want to be left out and I don't want them to feel bad that they're doing it without me. And so it's a kind of community thing. So let's keep that sense of community. They're having biscuits. What can I have? What can give me some uh, satisfaction here? What what can my hands be doing? What can I be doing at the same time that's kind of not as damaging in terms of sugar intake or not as impactful on one's figure? Mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's still crunchy, it's still textured, it's still flavoursome, and yet it's not as, as bad, if you like. We're replacing one thing with another. We're taking the sub-modalities um, of one thing and utilizing those for another. Mm. That makes sense. I might be getting a bit high, Bray. You'll have to pull me back, Claire, if I am. Yeah, maybe we'll we'll stop and stop modality. But could we do an exercise then, Jenny? Oh yes. Okay, so maybe we won't do it on the biscuits because <laughs> maybe there's not an anchor there. Maybe it's just I'm just a greedy get. <laughs> Can we do? an anchoring of something and i'm thinking with everything that's been happening at this moment in time and we're all quite stressed and worried about things can we create ourselves an anchor so we can release a little bit of 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 stress um and and actually feel better in ourselves is that some is that an anchor we could be doing Oh, yes, I'm already there. Can you tell? Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. So can we all do it together? I mean, we've, got, we've got Artie, we've got Gary, we've got Vicky here with us. How about we do a bit of a, an anchoring session? Then? Oh, yeah. I need more tea for this, Claire. I'm just going to look, I've got more tea at the ready. Here we go. <laughs> Always look after yourself. That's what I say. <laughs> Always look after yourself. Then you can look after others. So That's here we true. go. For the right. mask of you right. definitely so here we go folks it takes a little bit of playing along i know you can just watch this either now or on the replay and not play along though your unconscious will take what's useful whether you like it or not that's why you are so influenced by all those adverts even if it's a billboard that you walk past you are constantly being given information from the environment in which you find yourself. So we're talking about environment and we're talking about environmental factors. So what is it, I wonder, as you do now, as you listen to the sound of my voice and I am connecting with your higher mind, if you like, what is it, I wonder, that makes you feel more comfort, more ease? Even now, thinking about snuggling down into a lovely, comfortable warmth, into the privacy of your own bed, your own space. I want you to just really feel now, even just sitting there or doing the washing up, whatever it is you happen to be doing right now, listening to the sound of my voice, knowing that you can, in your mind, notice what makes you feel more relaxed than you do right now and as you do so that might be different for each one of you so think about the fabric of what you're wearing against your skin notice the feeling the heaviness or lightness of the cloth whether it's smooth or a little bit prickly the weight Claire of those pearls around your neck the feeling of the hair against your neck too, the support of the chair beneath you, the support that is there, give in a little bit to gravity, allow it to take the weight. As you are more relaxed than you were a moment ago, realise now that you have the ability to change your state. In whatever situation you find yourself in, Artie, Vicky, Claire, anybody who is listening now or listens in my future, isn't that wonderful? You know that you are always zipping through time. 
very rarely are you in the present moment. You're thinking about something you're about to do, or will be doing later, or reflecting on something that's already gone past. And thank goodness we have a past, because everything you've ever experienced right here, right now, will come to serve you. You know how to feel more relaxed, more comfortable, more at ease. You know there are things that you can reach for in your environment that could be more satisfying, bring you more pleasure, more comfort, more protection than it does right now. I want you to, in your mind's eye, recognize you live in a world full of stuff and you are surrounded by wonderful people and you have a voice, you have taste buds, you have hearing, you can listen to music, you can move your body in a way that feels good, or you can just let go completely into the support of a bed or chair, or even lying flat on the ground, imagining that your carpet beneath you is a carpet of cool green grass grass that grows even where we don't even want it through the tarmac people on a beach at the edge of a shoreline who knows what the environment can present you with right now but things are continually moving changing and evolving your body right now is repairing itself digesting its food it's knowing to give you signals when it's thirsty or when, yes, it might be a little bit stressed. And there is no harm in reaching out for that which you want, as long as that which you want is going to help you remember how to bring yourself more comfort. And I'm not talking about stuff that people reach out for that's going to deaden their nerve endings and stop them feeling. You see, a lot of what people reach out for is to not feel as much as they do right now. And I say, how about feeling more comfort instead? How about feeling more ease, more pleasure, more in tune, aligned with your physical self? And just at that moment in time when you know I'm saying these words and some of you are listening and some of you don't, and that's fine when you're listening and it's fine when you don't, as long as you allow yourself to relax. You don't yet know just how useful this is going to be. Oh, it's easy to relax in the privacy of your own bed late at night unless you're eating biscuits. Though you can bring yourself now to a point of focus within just five minutes, a kind of mini meditation, whether you are in the presence of other people or not. You can just close your eyes for a moment and relax. Taking a deep breath in, allowing that breath now, yes, something that you all do, allow the breath to be your anchor. Knowing that you breathe from moment to moment, there isn't a moment during the day or night when you don't breathe. So allow that breath now to relax you. I want you to recognize that you know exactly the state of every human being you come into contact with today by how they're breathing, whether they are excited and happy and breathing a lot quicker and more shallowly because they're so excited or because they're anxious and it's the same physical state or whether they're a little bit bored and just a bit fed up or relaxed. You're going to be more aware now of how they breathe and the impact it has on you and how you breathe. Choose now to breathe more deeply. Choose now to allow that next breath, far quicker than I can ever say, allow that breath to remind you to take in from life that which you want and to release that that is no longer useful. 
every single breath in and every gentle breath out is there for you always when you recognize now this is what you can rely upon to change your state so that if you do get a little bit anxious at some point in time you can do something with your hands you could hold your own hand interlace the fingers because you are always there for you just like your breath just like every breath you take you can allow the breath to relax you deeply and just float along on that gentle rise and fall of your own body even when you are showing somebody your interested face so you're not really engaged anymore with what they're saying even when you're kind of pretending to watch the telly with somebody though you're not really interested anymore even if you're a passenger on some public transport in the middle of a conversation in the middle of the busyness of living your lives you will always breathe so you notice now how you breathe you bring your attention to it and you anchor in that comfortable relaxing breath whether you make a fist whether you hold your own hand or whether it's just the breath itself breathing in deeply three times even with your eyes wide open will bring you to a relaxed state of being whether you remember being on a beautiful tropical beach somewhere or in the safety and privacy of your own bed you know how to change your state and now you know how to utilize the anchor of your own breath all you have to do is breathe bring your attention to it by that anchor feel comfort and ease and allow yourself to feel the pleasure of being in this physical form completely supported by the environment around you whether you are standing up on the secure floor and ground that your feet are firmly planted on whether you're sat down and allow yourself to just drift down into the support of the security of the chair that you're in or lying down reclining in some wonderful comfortable pose you know how to make yourself feel better you know that there is something that you can do to change the quality of your breath and to utilize it when you might need it the most anchor it now do something physical hold your own hand make a fist even just press your thumb and forefinger together maybe do something that you know when you do that again it's going to bring you a sense of comfort and ease do what you do that can so easily be repeated when you are in the busyness of living your life when you need it most why not add a bit of confidence in there too a bit of confidence a bit of ease a bit of comfort a bit of pleasure and now you can think and compare as we do all the time as human beings whether this feels better to keep spinning that feeling and feeling that support and comfort and ease and flow through you or whether a grainy salty sugary biscuit or cracker is going to give you that feeling and if it does maybe one biscuit or one cracker can return you to this state because when you feel good that's all you need in a moment you'll open your eyes if your eyes are closed in the moment you'll open your eyes and you will rejoin me to talk about how good you can feel and how you can change your own state by an anchor 
how about that, Claire? Did I go on a bit? I think I went on a bit there. Wow, there that was just really good. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I feel so relaxed. <laughs> I think I was so bumped up, you know, when we started because we've been talking about doing this for for quite a few weeks now. So I was so excited. I just feel really chilled now. <laughs> well, there's anchors. You have to turn it off now. <laughs> you to calm you down. There's anchors to raise you up. Raise you up. You know, yeah. Depends what you need at the time. But I think we've kind of talked about this, Claire, and we've thought that the, the best thing that we can do the best anchor we could give people at the moment <clears throat> is that kind of um relaxed anchor yeah. that comfort that surety so we don't need to keep reaching out and picking at things that hopefully will bring us that when we've already got it yeah. in the breath mm. Mm -hmm. And it's that, you know, it's really that it's so in depth when you're in that moment isn't it and it just feels so good in that moment it's it's quite unbelievable that you can recreate that by just touching your thumb. I was just touching yeah. my thumb there. Mm -hmm. And that breathing as well, it just makes it, it it's so powerful, isn't it? Just a little thing.